funny thing is, I actually didn't start out wanting to be an author for young people. Uh, when I was a kid, I really didn't read a lot of uh, young adult literature. And, you know, most people who become authors for kids, they do a lot of that. But I, when I was younger, I read mostly books for adults, and I still do. I don't, to this day, I don't read a lot of young adult literature. I read some. I read some that my friends write and other things that are out there that I think are, are really important to read. Um, and when I was a little kid, I didn't read a lot, period. I, my parents were teachers, and so I was a good reader, and I enjoyed it, but I just kind of wanted to play hockey. So it took me a long time to, um, to really be, understand the magic of reading, and now, of course, I just love it. But I still, as I say, read mostly, uh, I think, books for adults. And so I reached a point uh, when I was uh, growing up in high school and into university where I thought, I want to have my say. I want to express myself. I want to be an artist of some sort. And I wasn't sure what kind. And eventually I started to, I just loved reading so much and loved books so much that I decided I wanted to be an author. But I, I thought I was going to be writing only for adults. And in my career now, I do write for adults as well. And I write television documentaries and plays and, and that sort of thing. But the opportunity to write for young people just kind of came to me. And I think this happens a lot with, uh, with authors. Uh, I went on an ocean kayaking trip to Newfoundland with my wife and brother and sister-in-law and we were kayaking and we came upon this island this abandoned island called Ireland's Eye and I just knew when I saw this place that I could write a story about it and I knew it was a kid's story I knew the protagonist would be a kid so I created this character named Dylan Maples and I wrote this story called The Mystery of Ireland's Eye which was the first book in the Dylan Maples adventures which became really popular. And I have a new one out called uh, The Phantom of Fire right now. Um, so that's how I started uh, doing it. So it's funny how you know, these things kind of in some ways just fall into your lap. There was a story and it was for kids and it came to me. I actually looked at, look at self-isolation as an opportunity and I hope, full, hope that many of you do that as well. I look at it as an opportunity to do many of the things that I wouldn't maybe have the time to do regularly. So I'm doing way more writing than I normally do. Uh, I'm doing much more reading. I'm trying to sort of exercise those mental muscles that you need to exercise as an author. With an author, you're kind of like an athlete, except for you're not exercising your, you know, your biceps and so on. You're exercising your mind and your imagination. So I've actually been studying vocabulary and, um, and grammar, and as I say, do a lot of uh, reading. And of course, I'm also doing some exercising and yoga and walking and that sort of thing and watching movies and so on and being with my family, which is the most important thing, which has been wonderful. I don't know if there's a the best book. There's a million books. There's a billion books to read. Um, but one that I really like and has always been maybe my favorite book, certainly right up there, is a book called The Little Prince by uh, um, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, a uh, French writer. It's a wonderful book um, about the importance of invisible things. Um, kindness, love, imagination, that sort of thing. And it's about somebody who has an accident in his airplane, goes down in the Sahara Desert, and this little prince appears, and he's just amazing, and he has such an amazing story to tell. So that's a good book to read. But you could also read books by Shane Peacock. I don't know if you've heard of him, but you could read Shane Peacock's books. He, The Artist in Me, which is, uh, I think, a good book uh, about the artist Vincent Van Gogh um, and a child who bullied him, uh, which is a picture book. Uh, the Boy Sherlock Holmes series, which is for older kids. Uh, murder mysteries set in Victorian times. Kind of a little bit scary, but it's kind of cool to be scared in a way. And uh, The Dark Missions of Edgar Brim, which is for even older kids. It's got monsters in it and that sort of thing. And, uh, and The Dylan Maples Adventures, which teaches you a lot about Canada and how strange Canada is. So those are all possibilities. The thing that I always say to young writers is make sure that you write about the things that you really care about. And I'm pointing at you, right? Don't write about what other people think is cool, right? Write about what you think is interesting. That's what I always do. And in some ways that sounds kind of selfish, but it isn't really. 
You need to write about the things you care about. And then you will write about it authentically and you'll put a lot of feeling into it. And that feeling will come through in your writing. Okay, so it's really important to do that. Also, if you're writing as a kid, make sure you finish the things that you're writing. Okay, because many kids, when they decide they want to be writers, they start writing and then, oh, they kind of run out of steam. Oh, I do something else. And, oh, this is boring. This isn't very good. Or, you'll never be a writer if you do that. You have to finish the things that you're writing. You have to acquire that discipline. So that's a couple of things that you can do. A random fact that might surprise people about me is that I like malls. Pretty weird, isn't it? Especially weird for, I think, somebody like me. I mean, if you look at my life, if you knew me, you wouldn't expect that would be true at all. But I really do. I like going and walking around malls. And I think I'm just, I, I like observing people. I think it, it's really good for my writing. And you just see so many people and so much interaction. And you also see just human things, you know, this desire to consume and buy and that sort of thing. So I always find that very, very interesting to watch. Editing is the thing that I, I find the least interesting because it's just sometimes it's a little bit of drudgery. You know, you got the whole story written and now you're just fixing your grammar and your spelling and you're working on does the subtext work, is the pacing correct and all of those things. And you end up dealing with your editors and I love my editors, but you go back and forth a lot and just try to get that part right. And that's kind of a little bit more like only hard work rather than, I mean, all writing is hard work, but it's not imagination and hard work. It's just kind of hard work. So that would be the thing that I like the least about writing. The best part of being a writer is the opportunity to create. It's the time when you get an idea and you just think, wow, that is so cool. And you think of where you're going to set it, who the character is going to be, and you start to inhabit those characters and you start to write the story. That's the most exciting part. It feels, you just feel very creative and, and you're exploring your imagination at that time. So I've been inspired by many things and many people. Uh, you can be inspired by anything. I think most authors will tell you that. You can walk down the street and somebody could say, I wonder how they got that elephant into that car or something like that. And you think, whoa, well, there's an idea. And authors have uh, sort of developed antennas for what works as a story. But when I was a kid, I think I was most inspired by my father because my father used to tell me bedtime stories, my brother and I. And those stories were so good that I didn't, that I actually wanted to go to bed, okay, because I wanted to hear the stories. And he was very good at building the story up and then getting to a really exciting part and then saying, okay, boys, we're going to hear the next part tomorrow. So I started to get really interested in stories and what's going to happen next, which is really kind of the gasoline of all stories. But nowadays I'm inspired by everything around me. And when I write, I tend to start, this is different for writers. I, most writers don't do this, but I tend to start with the meaning of the story. And so I'm always looking around at what's going on in the world right now and, and what matters, at least to me, in the world. And then I create characters and situations and settings and exciting things from that. Right, right now, COVID-19 is in the world. So I'm thinking about, about it, you know, disease and about the sort of how perilous life can be and relationships and what it's like when we're separated from others and that sort of thing. And then I would I'll probably someday take that and I'll, build something really exciting, maybe a dystopian story or something around that. Um, I mentioned this book before, The Little Prince. That was definitely one of my favorite books uh, when I was a little kid. But also my parents used to read me uh, novels by Charles Dickens, if you can believe it. Um, and, you know, that's a novelist for adults, for grown-ups. But he has some stories that are wonderful. He's maybe my favorite author to this day. I just love his stuff. Now I appreciate it in a, you know, I think probably a much deeper way, but my mother and father used to read Oliver Twist. And Oliver Twist is this great story about this kid who's an orphan who comes to London and he has nothing and he falls in with this gang. And it's just an amazing story about life and very exciting. And uh, so Oliver Twist was another one that I really liked when I was a kid. Well, I'm not sure that I would want to be quarantined or would many people want to be quarantined with many of my my protagonists because my characters tend to be a little bit dark, a little bit scary, or at least they're, they're getting involved in scary things. And sometimes my characters are a little bit tense, you know. 
Um, so like um, the Sherlock Holmes in The Boy Sherlock Holmes, he's a little bit like that, pretty intense guy. Edgar Brim is very intense, has some difficulties with anxiety and that sort of thing. Dylan Maples might be all right. I mean, very Canadian guy. He'd be an interesting guy. But I think the character that I would love to be quarantined with the most is a character by the name of Sigerson Bell who is in the Boy Sherlock Holmes series. And he's kind of Sherlock Holmes' uh, mentor. He's an older man, and he's an apothecary and an alchemist. And he talks with a really high voice, and he's bent over in the shape of a question mark. And he's very strange. And I really like strange people. I like weird people, and I like weird characters, and I have so many of them. And one of the reasons I like them is I think I'm kind of weird. And you know what? I think you're kind of weird. Whoever is listening or watching, because you're weird. Everybody's weird, you know? And it's important that we understand that we're all different. And that what's, is one of the things that makes us interesting. Sigerson Bell, very weird, really interesting character. You encounter him for the first time in um, Death in the Air. He'd be a great guy to hang out with. He'd, he'd do a lot of talking. A lot of talking. But I can talk quite a bit, too, so that'd be all right. Well, the funny thing about the Edgar Brim series, uh, The Dark Missions of Edgar Brim, is that I didn't really write it because I was really into horror stories and gothic stories and so on. Many people who interview me think that's the case. Oh, you wrote this because you're really into horror stories. You love horror stories. You love scaring people. That's not true. Okay. I wrote that series because I wanted to write about fear. And I wanted to write about anxiety because I was noticing how much there was in the world, how it was a problem, how it was problem for kids. And so I created this character who really has a kind of an anxiety disorder um, in Victorian England and Scotland, although we didn't know what, they didn't know what anxiety disorders were in those days. And I thought, if I want to write about fear and anxiety and I want to set it in Victorian days, bring on those horror stories, you know, fear, horror stories, gothic stories. So uh, I did that, and I read a lot of um, I read a lot of Dickens. I read a lot of um, um, just a, a lot of horror stories. I read a lot of um, I read Dracula and Frankenstein, and loved those stories and the darkness in the stories, and a lot of Gothic stories and these spooky houses and things like that. So I incorporated a lot of that. I got to read read a lot, which was really kind of cool working on that. Well, when I wrote the Boy Sherlock Holmes series, I did a lot of reading and I read a lot of Victorian literature because I wanted to, in some ways, almost um, not really imitate, but in some ways kind of have a, a style that was a little bit like kind of an or ornate Victorian style in the way that I wrote. Although I wrote it in the, the present tense, which I thought was a really interesting way to do it. Make it very sort of present, but make it kind of older and more ornate, that kind of writing at the same time. So I read a lot of Charles Dickens, again, my, probably my favorite author. And he has stories um, where he has some of the first detectives. I read Edgar Allan Poe. I read this wonderful writer by the name of Wilkie Collins, who wrote this spooky story called The Woman, the Woman in White, and those sorts of things. And they all definitely inspired me and helped me to write that, uh, that series, The Dark Missions of Edgar Brim. And, uh, and, the Boy Sher and The Boy Sherlock Holmes, both of them were kind of influenced by all that sort of writing. Well, one of the books that you could read to kids or that they could read is my picture book called The Artist and Me. And again, that's a story about uh, Vincent van Gogh. Um, but it's a little bit different. It's a bullying story, but a little bit different. And I always try to do things that are a little bit different. It's about uh, Vincent van Gogh before he was well known, which is really during his lifetime. He became well known afterwards. And he painted what people considered to be bizarre pictures. People thought he was really weird. He was kind of an outcast. So it's a story about bullying, but it's a story about a child bullying an adult, told from the perspective of the child when he's older. So there's lots of lessons in it. Not that I write things to tell people, oh, you must act like this, and these are the lessons. But there's lots of just things going on in it about, about art, about bullying, about respecting others, even though they're different and that sort of thing. Um, also, I think most of my, my books for older kids, which is the bulk of my work, um, the Boy Sherlock Holmes, The Dark Missions of Edgar Brim, The Dylan Maples Adventures, they all have very empowered characters. Um, and they're about characters growing up and maturing, okay? They're, um, 
Uh, you see see that quite a bit in the character in the Dylan Maple's Adventures. You learn a lot about Canada too. So those are those are ones that would be good to read during this period. No, I cannot tell you about any of my upcoming books. I don't want to give anything away. Just kidding. Um, actually, recently I've been doing something kind of strange. I've, I've been working on a whole bunch of books at once. And I always say to kids, don't do that. Only work on one book at a time. Um, but I just had all these ideas. And two ideas for books for adults and two for younger people. And I've whittled it down to the point where there's just two that, that I've written. Uh, one is, as I said, a book for adults. And it's a, it's a murder mystery. It's very it's grown up and it's dark, set in Canada, very spooky murder mystery, uh, possibly entitled As We Forgive Others. It's kind of about the idea of forgiveness underneath. And then the other one is a romance. First time I've written a romance. And it may be called The Book of Us, not certain at this point. And uh, it's for teens, I think, or for, for maybe grade seven, eight, and teens into high school and for adults. And it's about this relationship between uh, these kids in grade 11. They fall in love and uh, they're really smart and they do a lot of reading. And there's a lot of discussion of literature in, in the series. And I was inspired to do that by John Green, who writes wonderful stories with really smart characters in it. And they fall in love and they have a really close relationship and they have like the most wonderful relationship in the school. And then suddenly he says something and she hears him and she breaks up with him. Of course, I'm not going to tell you what he says. You have to read the book to find that out. And what he does through the rest of the book is he understands that he needs to be a better person and he needs to treat her better. He needs to treat girls better. So he changes his life and he has a goal. And his goal is he's going to ask her out. Let's see if she'll say yes. So he spends an entire year trying to become a better person. And at the end of the book, you find out whether or not she says Yes. And there's another really big twist in the story, which I won't reveal now. Thank you very much for listening. I hope I answered all of those questions well. Uh, I hope you're staying safe. Uh, I hope you're finding ways to do interesting things and have fun and be with your family during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. We will get through this. Keep reading. Bye-bye.